This video will discuss the concept of rate determining step in chemical kinetics. So we have some complex reaction here where we have the reactant going to the product with some observed rate constant K observed. And we're going to assume this is composed of a sequence of two elementary reactions, R going to the intermediate and the intermediate going to the product, rate constants of K1 and K2 along the way. Okay, so if this were just a single uh, elementary step going from reactants to products, the integrated rate laws we would get, assuming that this is a first order reaction, is that the concentration of our reactant over time equals, from the first order integrated rate law, the initial concentration of the reactant times e to the minus k observed, t, I believe these need to be k observed, there we go, e to the minus k observed times t. And the concentration of the product as a function of t, if we start off with initial reactant concentration of R0 and the initial concentration of P is 0, we have P of t equals R0 times 1 minus e to the minus k observed times t. All right, if we assume instead that we have these two elementary reactions which compose our mechanism for this complex net reaction. Then we have that drdt equals minus k1 times concentration of R. The change in the intermediate concentration over time equals plus k1 times R. It's produced in k1 minus k2 times I. It is consumed in reaction 2 and the derivative of the product concentration with respect to time is equal to plus K2 times the concentration of the intermediate. It is produced during the second reaction. All right, so if we try to solve for the integrated rate laws of this situation, what we're gonna get is that R of T equals R naught times E to the minus K1T. And we have I of T equals K1 times R naught over k2 minus k1 times e to the minus k1t minus e to the minus k2t. And for our product, we have the product concentration equals r0 times 1 plus 1 over k1 minus k2 times k2 e to the minus k1t plus k1 e to the minus k2t. Now this is the most general case, and this looks fairly complicated, and it is. There are a lot of different scenarios that can result based off the varying values of K1 and K2. But let's look at one of those specific cases. Let's assume that K2 is much, much faster than K1, or K2 is much, much bigger than K1. If that's the case, what happens? All right, so K1 is a much slower reaction, so it takes a long time to build up a little bit of intermediate but once we do, K2 is much higher, so this reaction proceeds very quickly. So any intermediate that gets produced is just immediately converted into product. So what would the rate law be in that kind of a case? All right, in that case, we'd have that the concentration of the product over time equals R0 times 1 minus, well, we have K2 over K1 minus K2, sorry, K2 over is that K2 minus K1? Um, either way, what we have is, since K2 is so much bigger, K2 minus K1, oh, I did, I switched to it to a minus sign there. Okay, good idea, me. K2 minus K2 over K2 minus K1. K2 is much bigger than K1, so K2 minus K1 is basically K2. And then we have K2 on top and bottom, so those end up canceling. So this ends up going to uh, 1 for this term. Over here, we have again, K2 minus K1 is K2. K1 divided by K2 is approximately zero, so this term goes away as a zero. So what we're left with is, if K2 is much greater than K1, then we approximately have the concentration of the product as a function of time equals the initial reactant concentration times one minus E to the minus K1 times T. Now let's compare this here and look at our um, rate law if we consider this to just be a single elementary step. We, we have P of T equals R naught times one minus E to the minus K observed here, K one here times T. All 
So if there is a so-called rate determining step, uh, that means that the rate law is just going to be determined by the first step. So here, K2 is much, much greater than K1, so the first reaction is said to be the rate determining step because this reaction is much slower, so it is the thing that ends up determining the rate and thus the integrated rate law. So it is literally called the rate determining step because it is the thing that determines what our rate law for our concentrations of our species as a function of time is going to be. And in this case, with K2 much, much greater than K1, our K observed for our reaction here is going to be equivalent to K1.